Johnson, are you there? Ah, uh, yes. This room is very dark. Yeah. It's also very stuffy. Quite true. So, what are we doing in this room? I try to find out more about MAE engineer Du. Okay, so how are we going to do that? First of all, uh, thanks to the MAE engineers, we have a cool and comfortable room. Let me get the lights on for you first. I see. Let me introduce you one of the MAE engineers. Let's, Let's go. go. Hi everybody, I'm Ella and this year I'm JC2. I'll be doing my A-levels very soon. I'm wondering what course I should be taking in the university right now and what job I'm suitable for. So basically, my stronger subjects are in mathematics and physics, which everyone knows that a suitable job for this kind of student would be engineering. I'm Johnson, currently studying at NTU, majoring in Mechanical Engineering. Before I come into NTU, I took up a Diploma in Intelligent Building Technology from Tamase Poly, which has supposed me on the sustainable designs of the buildings. I'm looking forward to contribute my knowledge back to the society to greener the uh, environment. I actually understand M&E engineers have a lot to do with the lights and aircon. So is that what you do? Well, an M&E engineer does more than that. M&E systems are actually all the internal systems of a building that makes a building function. It's more than air conditioning and electrical. Yeah, it's uh, plumbing, sanitary, fire protection, lightning protection, lifts, escalators. So they are more like the internal organs of a building. We make sure that the M&E systems that we design and we implement in the building is a practical solution. Different areas have different temperature requirement and lighting level requirement. You cannot compromise on the comfort level of the building occupants. As a student myself, I actually can feel the direct effects of what the M&E engineer does. For example, when I walk into a lecture theatre, I wouldn't want the room to be too cold or too warm which would uh, which will not be comfortable for my learning. They are the ones who design the very systems that make your room and your building comfortable and livable. This zero energy building is actually one of your projects, right? What makes this building so special? By its name, zero energy building, you will know that it consumes as much energy as it produces back. So we need to ensure that M&E systems that we design for the building are most energy efficient. Why don't I just bring you two around and show you some of the green features that we have implemented for this zero energy building? When I first stepped into the office of the ZEB building, the first impression was what were all those black round discs that were on the floor? It looked very much like a drain. Do you know what actually comes out from this drain like looking thing? You mean there's supposed to be something? This is where the air conditioning comes from. Can you feel the air coming oh, yeah. up? Yeah. yeah. When you do it this way, you actually don't have to supply cold air at such a cold temperature. Yeah, coming out don't have to be so cold because you're already here, it touches you first. But if you go up there, you have to take away the heat from the light and whatever other heat sources that you have and it only reach you. So you have to supply at a lower temperature. We noticed a very special looking light over there. This is actually light pipe. It brings in daylight from outside into this space. You reduce the uh, reliance on electricity. I actually noticed that oh, there were two speaker-like looking things on the table. So I was wondering, was it what, what, what is it for? You know, is, is it to play music? These are personalised ventilation. So what comes out of here is actually fresh air. It's to improve the indoor air quality for the office space. If you have a good indoor air quality in office space, it's actually uh, improved the productivity of the staff. It's actually 
quite fun for an M&A engineer because they can use their creativity and then not be limited by these conventional methods where you have to put icons on the at the top, you know. So an M&A engineer can also be very creative, which was not my original perception. The M&A engineers start with conceptualization. So you have a new building, what are you going to do? So you know that you need to have aircon, you need to have mechanical ventilation, you need to have fire protection system. Then you design, you run your pipes, your veins, where are they going to serve it to? Then after that, implementation stage. We are not the builders, uh, we, don't, we don't construct it. That's not the job of an engineer, but you make sure that the contractors construct it as per what you have designed. So you have to do site inspection. And after that, they have built already, they say, engineer, I've already completed my job. What is your job? Your role is to test and commission the contractor will prove to you. See, engineer, I've already built it as per your design. Mechanical and electrical engineering so in the build construction has often been through like an empty sketch from the architect itself where you can redesign so you can design the systems to fit into the plans of the architects. It's a very challenging job which will give you a sense of satisfaction after you seeing the system built up. For build environment, one project will be different from another project and it will always be very interesting. It's all very dynamic and it's all very challenging. And many engineers are also what you call building doctors. So you have to diagnose what is wrong with this building. Somebody come, my building is so hot. You have to do your inspection. Why is it hot? Like an investigator like that. And there's so many things that you can do to tweak here, tweak there. It's something that is alive that um, you can see its reaction. So when you solve a problem, it's also very satisfying. For M&E engineers, right, what quality that they must have? Okay, well, maths, you must be good at maths. It's something that you cannot <laughs> run away from. Physics, you also must be good in. The most important thing must have logic, logic thinking. If the creator of the M&E system is not logic, your building will not function logically. There's a general perception that uh, engineering is more of a guy's job, right? <laughs> so being a lady yourself, you can talk about some of the challenges that you face. To be a lady engineer, you have to toughen yourself and you must be able to take criticism. When people criticise your design, then you will learn. So um, have to be a bit thick skin uh, for ladies. Yeah. If you are an outgoing person, I think there won't be any problem with that. In my personal experience, as a lady engineer, People tend to like to teach you things. They are more willing to share experiences with lady engineers. So I find that as an advantage. <laughs> okay. okay. So guys have a lot of disadvantage. Uh, no, guys will not have <laughs> disadvantage. You already have your natural advantages yeah. because you are tougher to face the side challenges. It is really the passion that uh, you must have and you have the positive attitude. Then you will be able to succeed in it. So it's a very challenging but very fulfilling and very satisfying career because once you solve that problem, that very, very difficult problem, you will be so, so satisfied, you know, you have a sense of achievement. I will bring you to another project which is much bigger scale than this, it consists of seven blocks of the classrooms, which is also a Green Mark Platinum project. M&E engineering is something very dynamic. You can always look forward to learning something new every day.